I was like, what do you think of this? And they were like, I think it's a good test. They're like, you date the worst fucking guys. So <laughs> honestly, this is a good gauge of how men are going to treat you after sex. gotta eat welcome back from the studio <laughs> how many more weeks without the sign ah uh, this might be the last week I think um, so. so the girl who made our last sign is just making us a bigger sign we love yeah. it so much and we'll tag her on instagram so that you guys can shop it if you want to shop not our sign but a sign if you're listening and not watching you're like shut up we get it well you should watch the youtube <laughs> <laughs> we share all like kinds of like fun little snippets and photos and stuff oh yeah assets Assets, 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 if you will. Yes. Azul, would you like to join us and stop licking your dick? He never does that. I don't like it when dogs start like licking their crotch. And now we're just watching. We're just <laughs> staring at him. He's like, leave me alone. He's like, stop watching. Me. Me. Ew. I don't know. Stop. I know he doesn't usually do so. Azuli. I can't make eye contact with it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come? Come on. Come join us. Azul. He's embarrassed now. Cutie, I'm sorry I shamed you. You know I love you. I, I carry your bed in and out of my house as much as possible. Wasn't that so nice you guys walked in the house? The bed was already set up I for know. Him. You really have been accommodating to him. You're being <laughs> such a good aunt. Well, you know what? I recently learned that I'm uptight. <laughs> Are we going to talk about <laughs> this? It has recently come to my attention. I'm a little anal retentive about my home. <laughs> And, and every, I need to stop. And everybody knew. But everyone you. knew. I literally, everyone was aware. I mean, we haven't all been talking about it that much. <laughs> <laughs> that much. But you were so funny because you were like, Melanie knew, Emily knew. I was like, I didn't know I was this uptight. And Emily's like, I know. <laughs> everyone knew. Everyone knows how uptight you are. I mean, I buy a lot of white furniture. It's just like, I'm not equipped for pets and babies, but I do love hosting. It mm -hmm. makes me so happy, which you said that makes you uptight. So I realize I don't like hosting <laughs> and it's not about my home or anything. It's just, I feel too on edge or something when it's like on me to like, I, I'm not the best at like putting out a spread, boards. charcuterie, all the stuff. Like I'll have food and drinks, but then I'm like, I had you guys over and we had to order the food and I was in charge of it. And then it was like, it was going to take forever to arrive. And I didn't have enough chairs for everybody. And I just, I'd rather just be on someone else's turf. Like, I think I've always been like that. I will host, but I can relax way more at someone else's house. And I had a little housewarming party. And again, like, I feel like I wasn't fully settled in my home. We had to wake up next morning and fly out, but I just could never really totally relax. Like I was able to really cut loose at your housewarming <laughs> and your little housewarming thing with nine of our friends was like the best night of my life. And I was like, I'd be up, I'd be trying to cater to people and you're able to do both. And I feel like Kate is able to do both and people are able to relax and also host. And I just don't think I'm cut out for it. So it's, I've learned it about myself. It's funny. Cause I don't think that about you. Like you said that and you were like, I couldn't get comfortable. I think that people showed up at your house. There was chilled wine out. There was a charcuterie board out. And then you bought sushi. Like, I don't think that about you. Maybe, you know, internally that you're not as comfortable, but there wasn't charcuterie. Remember I did a little charcuterie for Jackie's birthday. That was really nice of you. And Jackie's was easy. Cause it was just like, we were doing it before dinner. One hour, I bought a charcuterie board. Uh -huh. I put out some vuv. I did some balloons. I made it look nice. But when you guys came over for my little housewarming, I had no apps. And I was like, you oh my God, apps. I'm That's mortified. True. If you walk into like a housewarming situation and there's no board, <laughs> what? I was like, I'm that what bitch. What are we doing? It's I, embarrassing. You weren't ready for a housewarming I though. wasn't ready. She wasn't you ready. Were, you weren't ready. She was not ready. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I still, at the end of the day, looking back, it's just not for me. And I just want to go to someone else's. And I'm happy to help and pitch in. But I just think I'm not that bitch that's trying to host. It's just funny because I am good at hosting. I love that like the bar is set out and people walk in the door. I have all kinds of like food that doesn't need to be temperature controlled. Um, I love Mediterranean food, barbecue, can just sit out. I love a charcuterie board. I'm so happy. But once like I do such a good job, but I don't want anybody there. Well, <laughs> it's funny because I watch you in action and I feel like the same with Kate. And you guys can be cooking, chopping, plating, arranging, 
and still carrying on a conversation. I think we were on a work Zoom when you were getting <laughs> your house warming yeah, ready. Like we were. you can really multitask in that way, and I am not that great at it. And it's fine. You just got to realize these things about yourself. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. I'm flattered. I don't think of you like that, but I'm flattered. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take some of our partners. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to Athletic Greens for supporting GGE. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash GGE. And thanks to ZocDoc for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who take your insurance and are available when you need them. Go to ZocDoc.com oh my God. <laughs> slash GGE and download the ZocDoc app to sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor. Yes, and thanks to Pretty Litter for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Pretty Litter ships free to your door in a small, lightweight bag. Pretty Litter can help eliminate cat box stink in your house. Make the switch today. Go to prettylitter.com slash GGE and use code GGE to save 20% on your first order. And new partner alert. Thank you to Earth Breeze Laundry Detergent Eco Sheets for supporting our show. Go to earthbreeze.com slash GGE to get 40% off when you subscribe. We need Matt Hesseltine in here to do this. He is... <laughs> so on these eco sheets like he bought me some for christmas me too he was like these go so hard i love them these fucking slap i dude. packed them these from new york fire. and them out these here. are flames <laughs> okay so it is may 22nd episode we're recording this kind of far in advance because we had some travel i went to delaware yada yada but just to get it out of the way like thank you if you came out to boston thank you to the boston celtics dancers for opening i'm sure they were epic and anything crazy we'll recap it next week and i'll talk about my trip to delaware but we just want to acknowledge that. And now this big run of tour dates is over and we are looking toward Ohio and there may be a few tickets left for every city, but definitely some should be left for Cleveland at this point. Maybe not. We're doing this a little bit in advance, but Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, we will see you guys on June 9th, 10th, and 11th. Probably not in that order. It's Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati. And then we're done for the summer. And then we'll see you in London in the fall. And then our whole ass tour <laughs> October is going to be a doozy. Yeah. But God, I fucking love Ohio shows. They're, They're so, so fun. fun. And wait, I don't know if you remember this. So during COVID, pre-vaccine, the world opened up a little bit. We did a couple shows. People were doing shows again. It was a lot of like social distancing oh and my gosh. screens and everything. Yes. And I remember saying to you, like, I never thought the first time after the world shut down that I, like, I got on a plane would be a Cincinnati. Yeah. And that's where we're ending this tour. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you know what happened in Cincinnati? What? Is this true? <laughs> And Pretty Litter. Okay, this is a GGE inside joke running since 2020. Rain and I still say this most days to time. each other. So we got some DM right before we're about to go on stage in Cincinnati. And it said like the Pretty Litter code isn't working or something about Pretty Litter. I couldn't do this. Yada, yada, the code, whatever, which we get a lot of times. And usually it's a user error. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Yeah. So double check. And a lot of it is for first time purchases. Yes. Yeah. Right. There's that too. So I sent a text to you and Beth, who is our sales manager, who we love. I sent the screenshot of the thing and I said, is, is this, this true? true? And it's just become this thing that I say to her all the time. We and say it to each other all the time. I meant is like, my tone was, is this true? Is this a thing? Is this happening right. or is this a user error? But Raina read this as, is this true? Like accusatory. accusatory. <laughs> it was like, did you just say Beth to Beth, is this true? Like, Beth's like our mom. We love her so much. She's so sweet. And I'm just like, is this true? <laughs> is this true? And ever since, <laughs> we have been saying, is this true? All the fucking time. It's like one of our dumb inside jokes. One of our other, our other backup joke is our agent, we were asking about something and he said, no one is good there. <laughs> <laughs> and so every, we do like hotels, restaurants, how's this place? No one is good there. I don't know, make you, you know, we haven't said in a while, which was one of my favorite deep cuts was, I'm not going to argue with you about something you know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys are like, we don't care about inside jokes. But it was one of the hottest mic drops I've ever heard in my life. It was at the Eurostar, Eurostar Hotel in Chicago. Mile. Yeah. And we were just watching this customer just like yell at the front desk guy. <laughs> and he just let that guy really peter out. And he was like, I'm not going to argue with you about stuff you know nothing about. <laughs> you have to let it settle in. It's so mean. It's so And mean. it's so like a conversation shutdown. 
I'm not going to argue with something you know nothing about. What? Uh, iconic. So that's for you guys. That's yeah. hilarious. You'll shut down any conversation with <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Okay. So we do want to say up top of this episode, we have a fantastic episode with Hannah Dickinson and we, we covered a lot of topics that she was so gracious enough to talk about, but do you want to just give a trigger warning for this episode? We do talk about disordered eating, sexual assault and Adderall abuse. So if you feel sensitive about those topics, please listen with caution or take that into account. And we do encourage you to do whatever you're comfortable with. And she was really open mm-hmm. and honest. And we just really thank her for sharing her story because these are hard things to talk about. And while we're here, I also want to remind people this is a comedy podcast and we definitely talk about heavier topics without making jokes. We've done it a million times. That's we don't have to make jokes all the time, but Hannah's a comedian too. And so there definitely are some moments that are about a heavier topic and there's jokes made and we laugh. And that's just at the end of the day, I personally and Raina too and Hannah being a comedian herself, laughter is how we deal with a lot. I can assure you there's no laughing when we talk about her sexual assault, but we are talking about STIs and some things like that. And so I always just want to make that clear the way we roll through the world, darker sense of humor, laughing all the time, dealing with stuff in that way is not for everybody. And so, you know, I would just want to say that up up top too. Yeah. The guest leads also. So she makes jokes. We lean into it. 100%. 100%. So if she was like, this is very serious, no jokes. Yeah. Most people are going to be fine with it. I just, you know, as always, I like to remind people this is a comedy show. Yes. So that's it. We hope you enjoyed the episode and the information and the takeaways. And yeah. Okay. What's first? I hope you guys really lean into the pina colada blow gel that we released last week. You want a blow gel tips here's the tip make it taste better yes have Uh, a tropical vacation in your mouth suck a dick less calories than a pina colada if you're into that and less money than going to the bahamas yeah i like both i like that you would be drinking a pina colada at the bar with somebody and be like, you know what would make this even better? Your dick. Mm-hmm. 360 experience. 360 experience. <laughs> so you can get that at vibesonly.com. We have tons of incredible Bluetooth connected toys. We have a butt plug. We have a clit sucker. We have a wand. We have all kinds of fun stuff. So check that out at vibesonly.com. Okay. I want to give a body update. <laughs> body, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. <laughs> body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. <laughs> Little bit. What is it? Body big titty, crazy. little, little body waist, big, big titty, titty body, crazy. <laughs> big, big titty, body crazy, low waist, in shape, probably. So body crazy, curvy, wavy, big titty, titty, little waist, the, little <laughs> boom. Is there in shape in there? Megan the Stallion, her body. Do you follow her? I mean, I know what she looks like. Do I follow her? Instagram? Just, maybe not. Damn, sexy. Um, yeah, I mean, she's been sexy at every size, I think. <laughs> but she's just, she's really popping off. Damn. All right, I gotta go there. Okay, right, body update. So I mentioned a couple weeks ago that I was debating going off of birth control. And at that time, I was still like, I had kind of one more day to decide, quite Mm -hmm. honestly, without getting in the weeds of like my cycle and stuff. So I kind of had made the decision in that moment, but I was still like, I could still turn back. And I have decided to go off of it. And so many of you guys messaged after that episode or when I did this question box on my Instagram story, just thousands and thousands of responses. I made mention that a couple weeks ago. So I'm at this point, just because we're recording a little far out. I'm like two weeks off of birth control. Listen, I don't know if this is when I would feel the effects, but my body has always been really susceptible to change and I adapt pretty quickly. So I feel like I'm off of it. I feel like a different person. I feel amazing. And I have hooked up with somebody. I have noticed I was hornier when we were in no Chicago. No one's hornier than this bitch. You were like, you're like, so actually, horny. You're, you're so acting horny. crazy. Like, you're acting like me. And then I did <laughs> hook up with this guy and my vagina was wetter, mm-hmm. which is something that, again, these are all the things that people said yes. and that people do say. We know people have negative experiences as well, but some of the positive things people say about getting out birth control is higher sex drive, more lubricated, and just feeling mentally better. And I don't want to speak too soon. I could have a gnarly period coming soon. You know, I could have really bad PMS. I'm just not sure. And we will do an episode about this down the road. We absolutely promise. And I will continue to keep you guys updated on my journey. But I just, I feel like, I know this is like the corniest fucking shit, but I feel like I'm seeing the world in color a little bit more. I feel happier. Oh, you seem happier. (laughs) I mean, I feel better. I feel thinner. I just... Everything feels better. And it, I know it's too soon to speak on this and we'll see how this happens. And everyone's like, you have to wait three months around. I don't, I don't know. Everybody's body is different too. This is like the number one thing I've been learning after hearing everybody's stories. But 
I feel great. I know people want to know what I'm doing to prevent pregnancy. You know, of course we know we're doing abstinence. What, what you can what do. Doing. Yeah, <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> Someone messaged me and said, would you consider getting your tubes tied? And, you know, it's interesting because when I thought about that before, I thought of like, you could get your tubes tied, you still get a period, right? So this isn't like a hysterectomy, okay. but then I'm like, maybe I should. And this girl, she said it in not an accusatory way. Is this true? She wasn't like, why wouldn't you do this? She was just like, I'm curious why you wouldn't. I was mm -hmm. like, I actually hadn't thought about it. This is very new to me. I'm only in the first couple of weeks. And then this other woman messaged me and she said she wanted to do that because she's the same boat as me. She went on birth control. She knows she doesn't want kids. And it's not something that insurance covers or her insurance covers. It's, they treat it like an elective cosmetic procedure, okay. which is just kind of maddening, you know, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm just getting into this and researching, but I don't know. I might do that. I mean, and, you know, potentially pay out of pocket. I'm assuming insurance just doesn't cover it, but maybe some do. I could be wrong, but that seems like that would be a viable option for me. And at least then I have the pregnancy thing not to worry about. Absolutely. So anyway, I'll continue to update you guys. Initial feelings are great, but obviously I have a period without my birth control looming and getting pregnant is the concern, but I've always been regular and I'm assuming I will continue to be regular. Could be wrong. And then, you know, tracking your period is a great way to know what's going on with your body and when you're ovulating as well. So yeah. anyway, that's my update. What or pussy, more horny, sex drives up, feel great. I can tell my body's changing a little bit for the better. You just, just feel good. You, I mean, not that you're like, you walk around the world being so miserable, but you feel a little lighter. Just I, like I just, marginally, yeah. like I feel like you and I have had a couple of weeks where like stuff could like really take us down. And I feel like it's not as bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys know I'm on a non-hormonal. I have an IUD. That's a copper IUD. Yeah. So you're like hormone free and, I want to talk about this deeper on an episode, but I always thought you were like crazy for doing that because I was just like, you bled so much. But like now I understand it. You were like, I want to still be me. Yeah. I had bad experiences yeah, changing bad birth experiences. control and going back on different pills. And Dr. Mira Shaw, who did an incredible episode with us about abortion and abortion safety, she did it for me. And she just said like, if you've been off birth control for so many years, which I had been, and you don't want to elect to put more hormones in your body, do the copper. So I do get my period and it was extremely heavy for a few months, but it's super, super normalized. I mean, it's no different than it ever was before. I mean, it's really light. I barely notice it. So that's what I do. It's just so fascinating how we're all so different, not a hot take, but like polar extreme opposites. Like Amanda was saying on Summer House last night that the birth control going off of it made her depressed. Yeah. The estrogen waves in her yeah. body made her feel yeah. depressed. And I really resonated with the episode because she said, like, you know, I've, I've avoided going to the doctor to address this because yeah. it's so scary. And then this is weeks ago at this point. But she said that it feels good to have a reason and to know that I'm not crazy and I didn't imagine all this. And it's, God, it's so hard to be a woman. I know. And then I was talking to Hannah Burner, and she recently went off of birth control. Uh -huh. Not for any, don't put words in my mouth. I don't know if they're trying to get pregnant or whatever. I didn't get into her about the reason, but she went off the one she was on for some reason. And she was like, I feel better too. Like, were we being drugged all these years? And I say that with the, with the joke, like a lot of people need to be on birth control and I'm a supporter of birth control, but yeah. it was crazy reading thousands of responses of women being like the dark cloud has been lifted. And oh shit, I'm not a depressed, anxious person. And oh my God, I have hobbies. And oh my God, I want to fuck my husband. And oh my God, I divorced my husband because I'm not attracted to him anymore. And oh my God, I'm a lesbian now. And I'm just like, this is some crazy shit. So we'll get a professional. Every one. time I hear this, the fact that anybody besides women vote on women's rights, the fact that anybody says anything to you about your body at all, what you can put in it, it's so crazy to me. I know, I know. What so we have to go through, we, it's insane. I know. So we know this is a hot topic and we will continue to discuss it. But wish me well on my journey. I'm loving your journey. You are so horny, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I feel sexier. <laughs> I'm into it. Okay. Well, we are just going to do a quick break. I'm going to talk about this laundry detergent Papa. that has the Hesseltines just obsessed. Matt loves it. So here's the deal. 
we're used to laundry detergent coming in these massive plastic jugs and 91% of those inconvenient, awkward, heavy jugs end up in landfills and oceans, harming our planet and marine life. There has to be a better way. And it's not like you can just stop doing laundry. So what can you do? You can switch to Earth Breeze. I'm going to tell you about it. But we started using Earth Breeze laundry detergent eco sheets. They look like dryer sheets, but they're not. And you can try it too. Go to earthbreeze.com slash GGE to get 40% off when you subscribe. Okay. So Yes. Giant jugs of laundry detergent. <laughs> what is that about when you don't need to do it? We don't need to be doing this. So Earth Breeze, it's liquid less laundry detergent that dissolves 100% in any wash cycle, hot or cold. So whatever kind of washer you have, this is going to work. No measuring, no mess and no heavy plastic jugs. Just toss the sheet in. And they've really made the whole concept of detergent better. So again, lightweight, obviously packaging, they're just little dryer sheet things like that's what they look like they're obviously laundry detergent sheets but they are biodegradable plastic free great for sensitive skin which is huge i mean a lot of people really can break out and get rashes and whatnot from their laundry detergent so sensitive skin safe hypoallergenic dermatologist tested compatible with high efficiency washers which i mentioned gray water systems and septic safe flexible subscriptions that can be adjusted, paused, or canceled by you at any time. No contracts or fees. We love it. Delivered right to your door via free carbon neutral shipping at a frequency you can set that works for you. Most importantly, you still get a powerful clean because you're probably like, okay, well, what's the catch here? Is this not going to clean my clothes? It absolutely is. Earth breezes, tough on stains, fights odors, and your clothes come out clean every time. If you haven't seen these, I don't know, do I need to describe them anymore? Again, they're just these little sheets and you throw them in and they clean your clothes. And it's crazy to compare this giant jug of laundry detergent to this little tiny package of flat little sheets. Crazy. Again, my brother discovered these actually and has been obsessed with them, gifted them for us for Christmas. And so when Beth, our queen, asked us, do you want to work with this brand? We were like, a hundred percent. Yes, we already use them. So we love it. I, this is the new wave in laundry. I love to do laundry. Do you like doing laundry? This is my chore that I like. I love doing laundry, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing laundry since I was eight years old. I have too. My mom like just didn't do it. She was well, just like, you're on your own kid. Well, my mom would just shrink my clothes. I had long legs. It was so hard to find long jeans. I People would just tease me in school for having high waters. You were eight and you were like, I'll take care of this. Yes. Thing. She would not separate colors, like whatever. She was so rogue with laundry. And so she was like, you want to do it? Do it yourself. And I would be so meticulous. I'd be hang drying stuff third grade. I'm hang, <laughs> I'm hang dried. I'm hang drying my pants. Surprised me less. My brother loves laundry. I love laundry. Like it, even with my ex, I was like, I'll do your laundry. I like it. I like folding clothes. Oh, I really get off on it. Okay. Cause you're horny lately. Anyway, <laughs> I've been actually masturbating to doing laundry in my tub. <laughs> That's your new horny category. So we really want you guys to try this. You can switch from the old fashioned goo to something new. Oh, cute. Right now, subscribe to Earth Breeze and save 40%. Go to earthbreeze.com slash GGE to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash GGE for 40% off. Yes. And a partner that I'm very excited about, which is ZocDoc. You know, I think we've all had these experiences where you go to the doctor and you feel like, I don't know, they make you wait for too long or they invalidate you or they're just not hearing you or they're not believing the things you say. And it's horrible to go to a doctor and try to address something and feel like you have a negative experience. So ZocDoc can help you address that because there are reviews from patients in there before you book anything. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. I've just, I've had experiences that weren't great and I didn't use ZocDoc. And I think it's important to choose a doctor using reviews from other real people because they can tell you all day long how great they are. But what's important is how people feel they were treated. And it's a trusted guide that you can actually like go read these things instead of scouring the internet for questionable reviews. It'll lessen the burden. So if you're not feeling your best and you want to address what's going on, you can find great doctors who do the kind of care that you need and minimize the surprises. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. You can choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information and get the care you need. So super duper simple. You can go to ZocDoc.com slash GGE and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash GGE. ZocDoc.com slash GGE.
Okay, three quick DMs about birth control just came in. I just want to read them. Okay. Okay, currently listening to your newest episode, I just got off the pill and have never felt better. That being said, I'm now on Accutane because my skin freaked out after 12 years on birth control. I've been seeing a lot of that. Okay. Like you can get acne, acne, adult acne, okay. even if you're redhead acne. I have not gotten any and plenty of people haven't, but that's the thing. Just pointed out there because I wish someone gave me the heads up. I started with the least spicy one. Next one, Ashley, all caps. I realized I was bisexual about a year after going on birth control. Next one, I became interested in women after going on birth control. Dead ass. <laughs> I mean, I like have jokingly been like, maybe this is my time to like, like women, but I feel stupidly attracted to more men. You're hornier than ever for Dick. Just troll in the streets. <laughs> I, yeah, you are, I love it. I feel so horny and I feel like I'm going to keep it rolling. Like I'm it's keeping the raining. momentum. <laughs> All right. Men and from your vagina. Okay. I have like an update on my LA life, but I'm going to start with the DM. So I got this. It really like, it made my heart so happy. Aww. This, this girl messaged me. She said, long time listener and new resident of your old place. Oh my gosh. Um, had to send you a message. I felt it was serendipitous. I moved to New York from LA in Venice. So we flip flopped and she said, I hope Aww. you're enjoying your place. We'll buy any tips, tricks or tea about the building. And it just makes me so happy to know that like there's a listener in my home. It's so Ugh. sweet. And she recreated the photo I took in New York in the apartment my last day there. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Which just like mourned my heart. And then I emailed the owners and I was like, your place is in such good hands and I'm so happy. And so I said, that makes me so happy. So I said, the people in the building are awesome. I love the people on the floor. And she said, <laughs> what? I'll be guessing who the hot guy you hooked oh up with God. is for the remainder of the time here. And I'm like, do I get ahead of this? <laughs> do I just tell her? And like, I didn't want her to be guessing. So I told her. So I... <laughs> right on. And I wrote, his name is, I tell her his name, he lives on this floor. He's always on the roof with no shoes on playing guitar. He kind of sucks. Don't judge me. But he's hot. So he's hot. Yeah. And he's not really that nice. And he does kind of suck. Yeah. And she said, didn't even make me play detective. Just full deets, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. Just hope he washed his feet before getting into bed with you. He did not. Are you DMing on your laptop again? <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, what? I was like, is this an email? No, Raina's got her Instagram DMs it's pulled easy. up. I think it's so funny that you do that. Um, I get it. It is. Emily does it. So I started doing it. It is easier. I start to feel like my eyes are going to bleed when I stare at my phone too long. But if you do my computer, I feel yeah. like better. I just, love that. It made me really happy. That's so, it makes me so happy. Heart. Should I say where I used to live? It's still vacant. It? Okay. Okay. So I lived in the Eve in the East Village. It's 433 East 13th Street. It is the best doorman ever. Ever. I loved it. I made lifelong friends in that building. The neighborhood has changed a little bit post COVID, just in general quality of that part of the neighborhood. But yeah. I still will love the East Village forever. And that was the building. And I loved it so much. The rooftop is great. They have a Peloton. And fuck it. I lived in 2DN. <laughs> So there's a North Tower and a South Tower, beautiful courtyard. And if you want to live in my apartment, they told me last time I was there, it was still available. You can live in the apartment that I lived in, Dewey lived in, Azul lived in, Raina was all up in. Tessa was uh, interviewed there. So we met you in that building for the first time. <laughs> in that building, yes. So if you live in the Eve, that was my home and I loved it so much. And when I moved in that building, it was one of the happiest days ever and... 2DN, what's up? <laughs> Let us know if you live there. Uh, <laughs> if you like, seriously, that would make me so happy. Um, I'm not trying to like one up you, but I don't. I want to have the same I'm experience. <laughs> Have that girl tell her friend. Well, I texted my neighbors. So I was like, you got to go say hi to her. She's so cool. Oh my God, your neighbors. Your They're COVID family. Shit. Shout out to that building. So I, I am really committed to California. I went to the DMV yesterday to get my California driver's license and had no idea that you have to. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to do this in New York. I'm positive I did not. So I had a Pennsylvania driver's license. So when I moved to New York City, I did not have to take a driver's test. Yeah. A written test. I did not have to. So they just, I mean, they're horrible. They abuse you horribly and they're terrible to you. Just like everywhere. You get the same experience everywhere. Not in Delaware. Not other nice to you? Ugh, love. Delaware's, every, you know, it's a different world. It is. I renewed my license during COVID in New York and it was extremely pleasant. Yesterday, I felt like they were like borderline abusive to people and it was, Ugh. it was hard to watch. Like this one woman needed help with the computer and like she clearly just like couldn't read one of the screens she's having a hard time and so I like stopped and helped her like the staff was really Ugh, really unkind but I did not know that I had to take a driving test and it is a lot of fucking questions it never ends and it never tells you when it's gonna end what I swear you don't know how many you're gonna do no 
and you don't know where you're at. I mean, unless you just is it like on an account. iPad or a computer? It's on a big ass old computer screen, and it is so many obscure questions. You like realize you don't know the answer to it. So like, it was like when you're approaching an intersection. When do you signal at like 300, 200, or one hundred feet? I don't know how many. I don't know what a feet is. Who the That's fuck crazy? Knows? And then one of the questions was like, on a hot day, how long does it take a road to become slippery? Who on earth? How is that a question? That? And it was like, how, how long? How long? That seems like a fake question. And it was like, three, how long does it take this road to get slick? And it said like four minutes after it starts raining or two hours after it stops raining. And I was like, this is too much science for me. I don't know. <laughs> I Would mean, you know those, Tessa? You studied. You studied. Right. Because I'm like, when did I do this? I'm like, oh, when I was 16. Like, I think we had to go to the DMV. We, I, I never had to drive with, like, a guy at the DMV, like, in Clueless. But I do think I had to take a test in there. You definitely did. You, you had to take it. And it's funny because, like, that's so funny you said that because I told our video guy, I was like, I failed this test. And he was like, 15-year-olds pass that test every day. But they day. study. <laughs> it's the same as SATs. Like, it's just like... You're prepared. And to my defense, all the questions about smoking with kids in cars and babies in hot cars, I got right. Okay, good. You know, all the like stuff that makes you a good person. I saw, there's a couple signs. I was like, not clear what they mean. <laughs> <Signs>. <laughs> I mean, uh, like so I failed twice. My blood pressure is like boiling. If you get eight questions wrong, you fail. And then I think it's like 40 questions. And they don't tell you which ones you got wrong. No, they do. They tell you as you're going. So you know when you failed. Oh, so, okay. So you know which ones to go back and correct. Yeah. You took it three times. <laughs> But it's different questions every time. What? It's completely different questions in a completely different order. I mean, none of them were the same. Thank I God I took my blood pressure meds that day. Actually, I was sweating. My blood pressure was through the roof. I was like, I cannot walk out of this DMV without passing. I cannot tell anybody I failed three times. You have to come home and tell Josh and Ty. Yeah. It's and then Ty is going to tell you she has a crush on Josh. <laughs> and you're going to be so upset. And then you're going to have to go shopping. And then you're going to be like, I love Josh. That's how I If I, I failed my driver's brother. test here in LA, I would absolutely absolutely go shopping in Beverly Hills and like live my most <laughs> clueless life. I'm going to fail the first time. Does anyone tutor for this? If you're listening and you have the test. Well, so I took it two times and I was like, I refuse to fail this because I have done a full face of makeup for this. I contoured to go to the DMV. I had every track of fake hair extensions I have in my bar oh, for home, your picture. In my hair for the picture. And, my, and the picture I took was so good. Where is this? I looked so hot. Did was you wear photo? your Fred Siegel Carla shirt? <laughs> Your most capable working a, outfit? I wore a, a cuts ribbed um, tank top because it's a blue background. So I had a pale pink tank top. I had the perfect outfit. My hair looked wonderful. And I was just like, I refused to contour again to go back to the DMV. The photo was so good. So I took the pamphlet and I like read it in the waiting room. Oh it's my God, you were there pages. all day. It was hours. So I mean, I read the pamphlet. And I'm like not retaining any of this information. There's so much information. A lot of it is like <laughs> 200 feet, 300 feet. If you're making a right on a left and a, it's so confused I did pass the third time thank god I couldn't come home and tell thank you thank god well I'm gonna have to do this my license expires in July did I ever tell you how when I went to get a license this is not the one I have now I've had to have a few don't worry about it when I had to go <laughs> get a license in Georgia once someone had told me that you weren't allowed to smile in your driver's license picture you don't have to but you are allowed in to. some state or so, I got my wires crossed and I thought it was no longer legal to smile <laughs> in license pictures and I took this picture that looked like I was about to fight a bitch and I was wearing like big hoop earrings and I just looked <laughs> pissed off and my friends made fun of me forever. And then Corey, like shorter Corey, she did the same thing. She, I told her. And so she went and we have these photos of us looking so mean and so mad. One of mine you ended a up. photo of it? Yeah. It's on the internet. One time it, it was in like a BuzzFeed article. Let's put it in my YouTube. Oh okay. my God. Like literally it was like worst licensed pictures. Ah! I, so I think I did a blog on it and some of my guy friends used to fuck around and like wear costumes and do crazy stuff like a long, long time ago. I think they've cut back on like what you can do. Like they would wear like a toupee. They would look crazy. They like would do a crazy mustache. Like some of the crazy party people I used to roll with in Atlanta were so funny like that. My mascot friends. And so I d compiled this blog so many years ago of like craziest licensed pictures and like put mine in there and then it got regurgitated so mine's out there somewhere. That is so funny. I'm really sad. looking like I'm about to like take my earrings out and fight somebody. It was so fucking funny. Well, when I went to take the picture, the first thing they said to me was, you don't have to smile or you can. 
Like you don't <laughs> have to. Maybe they said that and I heard you can't smile. Yeah. And then I started telling people. Uh-huh. I can't remember how it all went down, but it was like this hilarious thing with me and my friends and how bad mine was. I just, yeah, and I could not wait to get a new one. I want to end this right now so I can go see it. <laughs> I'll find it for I you. Take yeah, incredible. we'll put it on YouTube. I take incredible license photos. I'm <sighs> not photogenic except for at the DMV. Well, I can't wait place. to see it. And I'm, this is going to be my first one with my new face. Ooh, I can't I'm wait. so excited. Okay, so you did pass. You're a California resident, California, California resident. driver. Yes, it is. You the, know how long a road takes to get slippery on a hot day. I actually did not get served that question the second or third time. Oh, right. So I don't know. I don't remember. Are you dying to know? <laughs> They do tell you what you got wrong, what the right answer is. But I was like hyperventilating. I was like talking to myself. I was reading questions out loud. People were like, she's not okay. I just oh my was God. really freaking out about this. Yeah. But it is the sure. ugliest license I have ever seen. There is just a dusty old man that looks like he is taking a shit. I think he's mining for gold. I think he's a gold miner, like the gold rush in California. What are you That's talking about? That's my guess. The photo of the license. The that's California the license? license. I sent it to you. I told you it's a dusty old man. Oh, that's on it? Yeah. Why is he on it? That's the background of the license. Why does it need a background of that? I don't fucking know. It's not that bear? It's the bear also and this dusty man. (laughs) Raina, what if this is some like American hero? Uh, He just looks like a gold miner. (laughs) (laughs) That's definitely someone like famous in history. He looks like he's mining for gold. I had no idea why you sent me this. It's some other random girl's license. I didn't know why you were sending me that. I said this is the ugliest Oh, the bear is on. I love that bear. I love the bear. I want a hat that has the bear on it. George's was so good. It had the peach. New York's was good too. I yeah. just, just not this one. I live here now. <laughs> <laughs> so I another license story. I went. I don't know if my license was expiring. I can't remember, but I basically went to get a new license like a couple months or weeks before I turned twenty one. I'm pretty sure back in those days, Delaware, if you were under twenty one, it was vertical. Once you turned twenty one, it was That's horizontal. Did that too. Oh my god, yeah. So I still the dumb vertical one, but I was like, I had to get a fresh uh-huh. license. I was like, this is so lame. But my license was expiring. Whatever. I can't remember all the details. The night of my twenty first, went out at midnight. Lost my license that night. <laughs> lost it that night on the street. Actually, I was in the street digging around in my purse, probably throwing up in my purse. Lost my license. The next morning, we were supposed to go to Secrets during the day. Corey had to drive me to one of the trailer DMVs <laughs> in like Seaford, fucking Delaware, somewhere. The morning of my actual twenty first, I was in this trailer getting a new license so I go to Secrets. <laughs> I was like, Actually, I forgot to tell you this. I forgot this even happened. What? I lost my driver's license yesterday <laughs> when we travel. <laughs> <laughs> A new one? (laughs) What are you talking about? I forgot. (laughs) So... I was, it was a very high stress situation, and you have to you go to a, about? you have to go to a bunch of different counters. You give you all this paper, and then they paper clip your license with all this paper. <laughs> your and old one you lost. My one, the only one that I have. So you can't get your new one yet. They mail it to you. They mail it to you two weeks. So I have a temporary piece of paper that says my new one, and I have a passport which I will have to take to the airport. So you lost your we'll license yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Some kid is impersonating you right now, using it as a fake. No, I'm so sad. I'm so I love that license so much. It means so much to me. I just I had this big sack of papers oh, and they paper it. it. And I got into the car and I just kind of tossed everything in the car. And it must have just fallen out of the paper clip. And then I tossed all the papers in the car and I must have driven away. It's in the parking lot at the Santa Monica DMV. Oh my God. Okay. Well, we are going to get into it with Hannah, but first I am just going to tell you about Pretty Litter. Is this true? We (laughs) were just talking about it. They've been a long time partner of ours and I love this. I have gotten my parents on it. They have a bunch of cats and this has really changed the whole litter box experience at my parents' house. I've definitely noticed because I visit there a lot and they always keep the litter box in the laundry room. And before pretty litter. I felt like crystals were always flying out of the box and it smelled bad. And oh, my mom said though, these cats like to play in it because it's like maybe softer and it doesn't smell. And they're like partying in it. Partying in the pretty litter. She's like, I'll hear them late night, just like partying in that cat box. 
I'm like, because it smells good and it's dust free. Okay. Nothing beats Pretty Litter's ability to instantly trap odor. It's ultra absorbent, lightweight, low dust. And then one six pound bag works for up to a month without clumping. So that means no more wasting litter. And it really gives you peace of mind. The thing that we love is that the crystals change color to indicate early signs of potential illnesses in your cat, like urinary tract infections, kidney issues, and more. So they pee on it. If it changes colors, you can know something might be wrong with them. So you can really keep tabs in your cat's health and extend their life. And it ships free right to your door. You never run out and you don't have a huge kitty litter bag taking up space and you don't have to lug those huge tubs from a store to your car into your house. So we really love it for so many reasons. The health monitor is crucial and it really can give you peace of mind as a cat owner. And again, the cats love it too. They're partying in it. It doesn't smell. It's really going to change the game if you've never used it before and you'll never go back, honestly. So Pretty Litter can help eliminate cat box stink in your house. Make the switch today. Go to prettylitter.com slash GGE and use code GGE to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash GGE. Code GGE to save 20% on your first order. Prettylitter.com slash GGE. Code GGE. Terms and conditions apply. See site for details. Yes. And last but not least, something I take every single day, which is AG1. I take one scoop of AG1 after I work out in a bottle of water, and it is just the perfect morning routine. Athletic Greens is offering you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase when you go to athleticgreens.com slash GGE. I mean, this has been just the best way that I could start a routine that's good for me that I can stick to. It's sustainable. And to get all these things into my body with one simple habit. So 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and antigens. It really can contributes to supporting gut health, your nervous system, immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, aging. So it does so much for you. And again, it is really, really tough for me to sustain any new habits. So this is the easiest, quickest way for me to get the most amount of good things into my body the quickest and be able to sustain that. And you can subscribe. Your subscription comes with a year supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add to your body no matter what. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash GGE. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash GGE to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I love it too. Yeah. Goes without saying. Okay, so without further ado, we are so excited to welcome our very first guest into our brand new, beautifully wallpapered, wallpapered studio. <laughs> she is so great, so funny. We just had lunch with her in my kitchen. It was really fun. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> she watched us. She eat. watched us have lunch. <laughs> she is a comedian and a writer. She is a hilarious person. She is here to talk about all the things today. Please welcome to the show, Hannah Dickinson. Wow, I didn't know I was the first one for this. It feels Not the first special. one in the space, but since we wallpapered it last night, yeah. the first one. And first woman guest, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We just had Ramit. Yeah. Yeah. So you're the first person in front of this wallpaper. Oh, shit. I shouldn't have worn pink. <laughs> no, it actually looks <laughs> so good. I was thinking it looks so good. It's <laughs> so funny. It's like a green screen. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah, of course. <laughs> just blend right in. <laughs> yeah, you're like one of the only people that got an Ariana Maddox interview. That Thank was you. the craziest thing. So I'm like the biggest Vanderpump stan, the biggest Ariana stan, and Ashley sent me your clip, and you did basically like a mock style interview, but an interview with her, it was un believable yeah. oh thanks how, how was it come about yeah one of my former bosses she was just a big <laughs> fan of the show and she reached out like to get it and ariana said yes and she did sketch with you and yeah how was it it was cool i mean she is so cool and yeah i felt so bad for her so i was like i didn't want to be like how are you doing you know because <laughs> it was yeah. pretty clear so i was like oh you look great at the reunion she was like yeah, well, shit went down at the reunion. I was like, okay. But she's super nice. She's just like totally. going through it, you know? Yeah. Of course. And you got an exclusive, I feel like. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> she asked not to use names, which I respect because I had written with names in it. And uh-huh. that was the only request. Okay. Great. I mean, I just, I mean, I can't get enough of it. It's insane. It's like still unfolding. I just bought a send it to Daryl Sweatshirt to wear for the finale. Lala's selling merch. It's a whole thing. Oh my gosh. Are you into this? It's so funny. I wasn't. 
And then, like, this new season, my roommate's really into it, so we started watching it. Why? And then the scandal happened. And then my boss was like, does anyone like Vanderpump Rules? I was like, me! <laughs> 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 That's amazing. I feel like I'm proud to not, like, force Ashley to be part of the culture. I'm just like, she doesn't like reality TV that much. It's not for her. I am forcing her to be a part of the culture. This last night, I was like, I need you to watch the last episode. I just need you to watch it <sighs> so you can see what happens. I mean, I've never seen something go on this long. <laughs> You like mean, like a scandal or like any sort of pop culture reality anything like this is crazy to me yeah, it's like still really happening it's been out. months so i mean never in history has a scandal broken and every person everywhere near it has a podcast millions of instagram followers and opinion they are all just like breaking news live all the time they've all fucked each other they've all broken up yeah. with each other, and each other like you've never seen such a thing before in history and the show is still <laughs> unfolding <laughs> like <history>. can't re- <laughs> I, this is but my that's super how it feels. Bowl. Yeah, I agree. And then my former roommate in New York, she's an intellectual, and she was like, you know, in like, <laughs> you know, the 1800s or whatever, people would pay to watch the king and like his wife and like rich people just gossip. What? So reality television has been forever a thing. Oh, this is just the world's legacy. Like it's, yeah. we've always done this. Because everyone would... loves gossip. Wait, where would they go? <laughs> I think like they would go <laughs> to question. the you know their castle or whatever their main. <laughs> I didn't look into this, and I clearly don't know a lot about history. But the main salon and the castle. And it's also like fascinating because the scandal has broken, it and you are watching this happen. Like you read, you watch the show through the lens of knowing what's already going to happen, and it's like truly watching like the face of evil. Like watch. Watching people just lie to each other and you're like, I know what's happening. Yeah. I know. Ariana Maddox is nothing but a victim. I mean, this is her right. very close friend and her boyfriend of a decade that just lied to her face every single day in her home yeah. for half a year. Yeah. And that was one thing she said to me was that like in the interview with Tom and on Howie Mandel, he was like saying all this shit. And she was like, I have texts. I have videos. Like he was not like not my boyfriend. We weren't. It's just crazy that... Oh, he was saying, like, it was over. Yeah, she, it's yeah. been over. I've tried to break up with her so many times. <laughs> and, like, I also don't believe that because on the last episode of the show, he's like, this isn't true, getting so defensive. So it's really fascinating to me. I love this excuse that you only hear from men. You've n- I've never heard a woman in history say this. Men say, I tried to break up with her and she couldn't accept it. She acted so crazy. I mean, you hear the, like, I broke up with her, she couldn't accept it thing for men. And yeah. it's just like, no, you didn't. You break up with a person and you leave them or you didn't break up with them. Yeah. 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 I know. I'm trying to think if women ever say that. I don't know. (laughs) I've never broke. uh, I broke up with one person, but I feel like I get broken up with a lot and I'm not in relationships. (laughs) 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 What, like a situation show? Yeah. They'll just be like, this isn't happening. And I'm like, damn it. (laughs) Like, I want to be like, I know, but I'm like, oh, every time a guy gets comfortable, it's like, this is not going to happen. Oh my gosh. What can you do? (laughs) Okay, so you are single, like everybody in the room. <laughs> we're, all, we're all on the same page. How do you feel right now? Do you want anybody? You just like living your life, like you're about to go on this big trip, you yeah. know, you're just kind of enjoying I, yourself. Yeah, I was like, I wanted a boyfriend for so long, which sounds so sad, but you got to no, put it out there it. in the universe. You want companionship? And love. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no that's not sad at all. Every, <laughs> every girl listening is like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's not sad. <laughs> But then, like, last year into New Year's, I was gaslit by this guy, and it ended up getting so bad because he would tell me to, like, meet up with him, and then he, you know, would cancel the last minute, and I literally, like, did it five times, and, like, I I was losing my mind, like, had me come down to Miami early. He lives across the street from me. Had me come down to Miami early to go to brunch with him, and he canceled the day (gasps) out. Yeah. And I was like, I am never doing this again. I... (laughs) I've done it so many times. No, famous last words. Say it. I get it. Yeah. The amount of miles I've lost chasing men, it's ridiculous. (laughs) But it just felt so bad and I felt so duped. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't keep trying. So I'm just kind of out of the game. It's also fine to just take a break when you're like, this is exhausting and I have better things to do with my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're like young, like whatever. Like, that's crazy though. Also, like, what's the end game for that guy? Like, what are we doing here? Uh Five times? Like, is it a game for him? Like, what? I just don't understand it. Yeah, I think it became a game for him. And I wouldn't sleep with him. Oh. Okay. And my friend, I met him at a wedding and a friend of a friend was like, when I was going down there, she was like, she didn't tell me the full story, like, that he's 
been a douchebag and cheated on all his girlfriends before, which I was like, are you fucking kidding me? But uh, afterwards, it was like, oh, he probably wanted you to think that he wanted to see you. And then when he booty called you that night, you would fuck him. And I was like, that's so crazy that that would happen and that you know that. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like, that's such an ins- insane thought. But she was like, probably right. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? We talked about this in last week's episode. People just want attention. They just want like the hit and that's enough, you know? And he's like, she won't sleep with me. So I'm going to make all these plans. I'm just going to like see if I can like get her time. She says, yes, that's good enough. Like you don't right. have to be embarrassed. There's nothing wrong with you for assuming people that make plans with you are going to show up <laughs> right. for the plan. You didn't like show up at his door being like, please have brunch with me. <laughs> yeah. And then like, I think that of course we all feel embarrassed because we're like, I knew better. This is a pattern. I should do better. But like, I don't know. You're not crazy to think that somebody who like sought you out might show up. (laughs) Yeah. But then I'm like so jaded by it. Totally. So I'm like, I can't go out with a guy because I'm like, what's your move? You know, like I'm just (laughs) so defensive up top. And that's the worst way to go into anything. I I know. We've all like become so jaded and cynical. And it's kind of funny that you would be like the bar is so low. A guy just needs to show up for like, (laughs) he just needs to show up to the plans he made. Like they lower the bar. So like any halfway decent guy, you're like, what a king. Could you believe he came to the plans he set up? Like, we're fucked. <laughs> no, I li- I've literally been on one date since, and the guy opened the door for me, and I was like, oh, oh I'm wet. God. That is so funny. I also think that, like, when you start to get into the mindset of, like, they're all fucking terrible. I hate all of them. They're, like, it's really good to hit the pause button and be like, I'm yeah. feeling kind of bitter, yeah. like, because of what's happened to me, and, like, I feel like there's nothing for me to work on here than just taking a break. That's what my You just got to take said. the break. Yeah. She was like, the more you say all men are bad, every guy's going to ditch you or Mm -hmm. every guy's an asshole you're just gonna make that true yeah it's a self-fulfilling prophecy Mm -hmm. i was watching this thing that i don't know how credible the resource was but of the things you say your brain will try to prove them right isn't that that lucky girl syndrome tessa this seems like your generation like if you just say you're the luckiest person like good things will happen to you but if you say i'm fat and ugly and everybody hates me your brain will like try to prove that true well because you're validating what you already think about yourself and so we all have those friends that like aren't even that cute but they're like i'm the baddest bitch i'm the hottest (laughs) bitch and you're like you are the hottest bitch you know and it's just like people think of you always speak about yourself this is the second week in a row i've said this but like i think that like huh second 17th um (laughs) 57 i mean i'm guilty of it 264 I'm, (laughs) i'm guilty of like always saying i'm unattractive and then i look in the mirror and like if i removed some of the negative self-talk I said about myself I wouldn't feel it all the time you know yeah yeah I also in the past year I wasn't drinking and I I went through this like horrible I, I just had this trauma happen and then I went to rehab and I was like I'm never drinking again but I got my brain scanned and I confirmed that I have ADHD and anxiety so I got prescribed Vyvanse and Adderall So I became so addicted to them and I became so addicted to losing weight. And so when that guy ditched me and I literally lost it on him, I was like, okay, I need to get off drugs. Like I haven't taken it since. Uh huh. And I'm like, I feel so much better. Like I was so thin. It's funny. I was always like, I was like 110 pounds from five, six. So I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, like if I get really skinny, a guy will like me. And truly at my skinniest, I never had sex. And it's because I was so, I think, obsessed with, like, trying to be thin. And, like, I was, I mean, manic. I was Uh insane. So I think, honestly, him ditching me helped me a lot because I literally sent him so many texts. And I was like, you're a horrible person. And my friend was like, did you need to do that? And I was like, I think I did to, like, (laughs) look back and be like, maybe not take the drugs but it sounds like it was like Uh a real like awakening for you like and sometimes we don't thank him for anything fuck that guy but you know sometimes you need like a real shake up in your life to be like i'm on a bad path and i know that feeling of being like i'm thinking about my body every single day every single bit of food that goes in me i am obsessed with being thin it's the first thing i think of when i wake up in the morning i weigh myself and the number on that scale is like the thing that informs how i feel about my whole day and when i just threw the scale away and stopped obsessing about that stuff i felt a lot better I'm like the heaviest I've been in my life. I'm not, I'm just, this is the most I've weighed and I'm the happiest in terms of like yeah. my body. Had you had weight stuff before or did you kind of start losing it and it just viraled or? Yeah. I, I've always been obsessed with my weight. Okay. And, 
It's funny, I told my parents, I was like, I think I'm addicted to Adderall. <laughs> and they were like, oh, yeah, your grandmother was addicted to diet pills. And she was so manic, she didn't sleep for three nights in a row. And then she decided at three in the morning she was going to get rid of the dead leaves in the yard. So she set them on fire and burned half the house down. And, like, my mom and grandfather had to evacuate. I'm like, oh, so this is generational. Oh, like, my gosh. Totally genetic. <laughs> but, yeah, just because, you know, I audition and I was mm -hmm. doing on-camera stuff and people say the meanest thing, so I just became so obsessed. Yeah. And I, once you start losing weight, it just became an obsession. And uh -huh. I was trying not to drink, and so it felt like a form of control. Yeah. But I didn't weigh myself either until I went home and my mom was like, how much do you weigh? I was like, like 120. She's like, no, you don't get on the scale and I was like holy shit like because I, I was just so obsessed with not eating and losing weight but mm -hmm. it was like truly killing my brain yeah and it made it hard to date also yeah because I mean I, I had nothing real to add to the conversation I feel like I was just like you know just yeah like, and uh when you're in that state it's hard to know what you're actually looking for mm -hmm. and my friend do you know Frex little Frex I don't know she's a New York comic she's really funny but she also had an Adderall addiction a while ago and she could tell I had one. And so she like, called me out and she goes, Hannah, you're never going to find the love you want on Adderall. And I'm like, all right. So I dated someone that had an issue with Adderall as well. And it was tough on the relationship. And I was like screaming from my end, like you're a better version of yourself when you're not on this. You know, it was a real struggle for quite some time. And it was like, I would talk to a good girlfriend of mine whose partner was on Adderall for ADHD and was totally like not abusing it and really needed to get through the day. And it was just this thing of like, I just wish that could be his story because it's like a drug that a lot of people need and really helps them get through the day, you know, get through their life. Yeah. And I was on it for 12 years. So like I lose my keys all the time. I leave shit everywhere. I'm like, I call myself Houdini because the shit just disappears <laughs> in my hand. But I talked to like my psychiatrist and I was just like losing all of my keys, my phone, like my headphones, like nothing is worth like how I felt uh -huh. at, in those last yeah. few months of like being so addicted to Adderall. I would like take it all within a week and a half and then I would go buy more. Uh -huh. And it was like, I need it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Know this, but it's like when you're going out and seeking more, it's like probably not. Yeah. So you have this moment where like you had a meltdown with this guy of the relationship and not you physically, like the relationship melted down and you were having some food issues, weight issues, and the Adderall stuff. So when you like hit this moment where you're like, things have to change, like then what happened? Did you quit the Adderall cold turkey? Like how did you kind of like wean off of it? I just, I flushed all the Adderall I had down the toilet. I probably had like 60 pills of mm -hmm. Adderall and I flushed it down the toilet and I like called my friend and uh, I told her I had an Adderall addiction. She was like, yeah. It was like, it felt like someone who comes out and uh -huh. it's like, yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was yeah. like, yeah, I think it's pretty clear. And then I was just like, okay, I got to make a change. And like, I'm on Wellbutrin now, which you can't really abuse Wellbutrin. And were you sober before this? So I was calling myself sober because I didn't drink. Right. I haven't had a drink in almost two years. Or sorry, I meant like alcohol free. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So that made me... It was like I had nothing to bring me down. I wouldn't sleep for like days. Mm -hmm. And then I would like order food at four in the morning. I, one night I hadn't eaten in like two days and I was so hungry and I couldn't sleep because I was on so much Adderall. I waited till the diner opened up and delivered me Grubhub so that I could eat finally. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, this isn't normal. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm still up when they're opening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well sorry. This is off topic. No, no we, I mean, I think this is a thing is people honest. probably struggle with or even just any drug or being on the wrong drug or wrong medication or yeah. then abusing it or any and all of it. And then the weight stuff is super relevant. I think, and I just go back to what you said about being at your skinniest point and like not having sex or not feeling like wanted or desired. And Raina can sit here and say, I mean, I haven't noticed a difference, but you can say you're at your heaviest and you're at your happiest. And didn't Courtney Kardashian say that too? Yeah. Like she was like this, when you see the skinny pictures, I'm unhappy. And that's not everybody's story, but I think it's important to share things like that. Like there isn't some number on the scale or some size clothing you're going to hit and all your problems will go away and everything will work out with 
uh, every guy or girl you're into and you won't get ghosted and you know all that yeah. stuff yeah I had a size two pair of jeans from Zara and I was like oh my god yes and I'm like that's such a weird thing to be like yes but it's not because no, all we-, we do is place value on how women look and the size of clothing that you wear and I mean absolutely like Ashley said no weight that I ever hit made men more obsessed with me it just made me more unhappy and sometimes the thinnest people are the most unhappy and not that she's unhappy. I was watching this interview with Miranda Kerr the other day and she was talking about her like daily routine. And she's like, first thing I do is lemon water. I flush it all out. And then I have like a gallon of celery water and then I have like alkaline water. And I was like, are you happy? Oh, I saw that. It was like, she drinks like six different gallons of water before (laughs) we all start our day. Basically. I was just like, I'm not willing to do that. And I'm not willing to like count every calorie and beat myself up and have a bad fucking day. And like, I was willing to do that for like 30 years. And I, just like hit a point where I was like this isn't making me happier and the thinnest Mm -hmm. I ever was I was getting cheated on and gaslit and made to feel terrible and I looked incredible (laughs) (laughs) but I was fucking miserable every day food ruled my thoughts yeah and now we're in this like ozempic craze like we I say we is a collective culture like weight obsessed image obsessed Uh so I love having these conversations I do too yeah like my grandmother was obsessed with it so like (laughs) she made comments about me and my cousins like growing up and I love my grandmother like she was great but like that was something she really like talked about was our weight yeah so I grew up being very just aware of my weight and aware of how I looked I've always thought about my weight it's always on my mind and I've like gone back and forth and dieted and all the stuff nothing I would consider like disordered really but struggled and all the things but I don't even know what would happen if my parents or my grandparents or family members would have been saying things too because they really didn't and I feel so lucky for that like I remember coming home from freshman year first semester and I probably gained 15 20 pounds and like my mom didn't say anything like I would tell that to a lot of people and people would be like I can't imagine my mom not saying anything when I went home after first semester I had also gained 20 pounds and I go to my grandmother's house and she opens the door and she goes well clearly the food can't be that bad oh my (laughs) god (laughs) I was like okay right it's like you're supposed to be the safe space in my life and I'm home and I feel unsafe cookies woman you know right well and it's like I think about that scene in sex in the city where Samantha opens the door to the shower and she just looks like normal slim and perfect and they're all like whoa what's with the gut and we're like what <laughs> like so I just mad it's insane <laughs> I mean the movie is so problematic but you could tell her or Kim Cattrall had to like kind of pooch her stomach out to have like a tiny bit of fat come over her pants and I, she's sitting there like trying to look as big as possible and she's like I've just been eating a lot of guac watching the neighbor fuck it's just like guac she's, th- she's thin I think about this a lot and I want to say it delicately you know I think it's really important and amazing that I do feel like times are changing and I think we really lift up all different ways that bodies look and can feel. And I think that's really important. And hopefully we're raising our, our daughters and women today to like really love their bodies no matter how it looks. But I think that the message today is like, you should love how you look no matter what. And let's lift up all types of bodies. And there's so many women that are like, I want to feel like that but I don't feel like that. And I think the reason is because you can't remove decades of conditioning. You know, yeah. if you're in your mid thirties, you did grow up being told you were fat by every magazine and TV show that you watched in your entire life. You watched Samantha Jones have two pounds of extra fat. And then three women who are supposed to be your best friends are like, Whoa, you <laughs> fat ass. You know, like that was so normal. Never crossed my mind that that was crazy. And so I think that we're telling people like, love yourself and lift up every body type. And it's like, why don't, but then people are like, but why don't I love my body? And it's like, because it's going to take time to forgive yourself and accept yourself and like how you look. And that's okay too, you know? And I, you know, I've gained weight healthy, you know, it's been healthy, but it's still been hard. And I told my therapist, I was like, I feel like it's still in my brain. And she's like, yeah, you have to work on it every single day. Mm -hmm. You just have to tell yourself you love your body every single day. And eventually you'll believe it. So I just like, I'm like, I love my body. (laughs) Wake up and I'm like, I love my body. (laughs) I just don't want to feel bad about my body anymore. You know, I'm like so over it. And we're lucky to be healthy and we hate to like age, but then I have to tell myself like it's a privilege to age. So I think you just have to be thankful for what you do have and Mm -hmm. like have gratitude. Yeah. You really kindly volunteered to talk about something on the show that we're really excited to explore and like just normalize and talk about more. And we had an episode a couple of years ago with an educator from Planned Parenthood. We talked about sexually transmitted like STIs and you 
well, you can tell your own story, but you volunteered to kind of talk about your own experience with STIs and dating and sharing that with a partner and things like that. Yeah, I have herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Just look into the camera. <laughs> Make eye contact My name's with the Hannah. camera. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Hannah. I have herpes. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I have herpes and, the, you know, the bad kind, number two, downstairs. Number two. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. And uh, I got it at the beginning of COVID. I was staying in my parents' basement, which sounds really bad, but I wasn't like hanging out with them. And then I would go to my brother's house and then I hooked up, I was hooking up with this guy and he was like, you know, we were using condoms. And then he was like, you're the first person I've had sex with since my last S- test. Yeah. Last test. Okay. And I believed him because like we had been seeing each other multiple y- times. Yeah. So I'm like, he's not going to just give me an STD. And he did. And I, I got so sick. I got very ill. And so I thought I had COVID. So I was getting COVID tested. Uh, I, I had a fever of like 102. And then I like looked down and I was like, it, it was painful. But like, also I have really bad eczema. This is gross. And all the cracks in my body. So like when I'm really sick, it dries out all my skin. So I was like, oh, I just yeah. dry skin. And then I looked down and I was like, it's like a Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> oh my like, God. <laughs> <Anna>. <laughs> I was like, God fucking damn it. And then I had to do a gynecology appointment over Zoom. And it was like, oh my God. I'm like, we're just processing again. This is like all COVID times. Yeah. yeah. She was like, yeah, that's herpes. And then uh, here's the thing though. So then I had to go in and get a blood test to confirm. <laughs> right. And the woman called me on the phone and she didn't speak great English. And I only point this out because she goes, uh, yes, we got your blood results and you have HIV. And I was like, what? She was like, I'm sorry, HSV. And I was like, oh my God. And I don't want to shame anyone who has HIV. Like, no, it, it's, 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 it's a, a different disease. Yeah. yeah, it's a different disease. But I was like, <laughs> I've got both. Because <laughs> I was like, I knew I had herpes. I was like, I mean, I'm, just, I'm, I'm with you in this moment where like the world is the worst it could be. You're living in your parents' basement. You already had to show your, you show your pussy on, on basically a cell phone to a stranger. And then they take your blood and tell you all of HIV. Do you know, I've never been so relieved to have her. Am I going to get canceled for this? No. no. Right? My friend from home who was in D.C. who had to hang out with, she was like, when it rains for you, it really pours. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. But it's okay. This is like almost like when you tell your parents you did something really bad and then you can be like, just kidding. I just got a speeding ticket, (laughs) you know, for a moment you thought that you had both. So just having herpes like was a relief. So that's how we tell people stuff. Now we tell them two bad things. We're just kidding. It's one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's the way you should do it. I was like, Whoa, hell yeah. You know? And, uh, (laughs) I burned the house down and I cheated on you. Just kidding. I just cheated (laughs) on you. House is fine. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's how you gotta do it from now on. Crazy, it's fucked up. <laughs> if somebody ever cheats on me, that's how they have to tell me. <laughs> Ashley died, and I cheated on you. I'm just kidding. Ashley's fine. <laughs> oh okay, my God. Hannah, I'm sorry. okay. Yeah, so I was in my parents' basement, and then I would, like wouldn't get out of bed. So that was like the first time I lost weight, actually, because I like couldn't eat. I, I was like so stressed out about yeah. this. Yeah. Like, so can you just like walk us back? So you're like, okay, so I have herpes. Is it simplex two? Is that still a thing that you yeah. call it? Okay. And then what? I mean, what does it look like from there? Is it like now I have to talk about treatment or like tell us kind of how you processed it and what is next? I was so sad. Yeah. I was so depressed. I was like, fuck, like. And the guy who gave it to me, I called him and he was like, you gave it to me. And I was like, there's no fucking way, dude. I was like, there's absolutely no way. And I was like, my, I lied. I was like, my uncle's a lawyer. And if you don't come clean right now, I'm going to sue you. And he was like, okay. <gasps> I had sex with five other girls. And he was like, and one of them was pretty sketchy. And I was like, don't you fucking call her sketchy? Because now you and I are sketchy. I was like, the only person sketchy in this situation is you. I was like, so disgusted that he was like, talking about this girl who gave it to him like she's gross and i'm like now we're gross bitch like what the fuck so right right i was so upset and um but once you get the valtrex like once the valtrex hits it's gone and i take valtrex every day i haven't had an outbreak since i've never given it to anyone oh my god wow yeah okay so can i just ask like a I don't know if this question is going to come off weird, but to get herpes, I mean, was he having an outbreak at the time that like he didn't know about or like there was this moment we were hooking up 
and he was like, did you shave? And I was like, yeah. He's like, it kind of hurts when you, and I was like, I was so like, oh my God, I need to shave more. Cause it was in COVID. So I couldn't go get a wax. Totally. Uh-huh. And uh, I was like, oh, so embarrassed that like I had like a sandpaper pussy. You know? mm-hmm. uh-huh. So then it was like, I thought of that moment. I was like, oh, he was definitely having an outbreak, but I couldn't see anything. Right. Like, yeah. And that's something people should know. You know, yeah. if you think you're going to spot it. Yeah, you're not. You're not. You might not. You're you not might You might not. It. Like, I used to do a bit about getting down there with an iPhone flashlight. Like, if you want to check. Not for her, just to be, like, checking someone's genitalia out before you sleep with them. Just because it's such a bright light. You just kind of, like, do a little once over. That's not <laughs> safe sex, you guys. That's just a joke. I think people think, like, oh, I would see it. But no. I didn't see anything. And I was down there I'm not inspecting the while. area with the flashlight. Oh, and you were down there before that. <laughs> if it's like this. <laughs> You're not like looking, I guess. Right. right. You're not like lifting up stuff yeah. and getting. I'm not like you know doing. Right. I have a question. Gadgets, so when this so. happened, like, was your initial instinct ever to like Google facts about this? What percentage of people get this? What percentage of the of people that get it? How much does the medicine work? Like, did you dive into knowledge, or were you just like, I need to self preserve. I'm really sad. I need to think about this more. I told my friend I had it, and she was like. One of our mutual friends has it. Let me ask her if I can tell you. Totally. And she did. And then that girl, we talked about it. She's like, I don't tell people. Like, don't tell people. And I was like, all right, I'm going to tell people. But she sent me your guys' podcast. She was like, see, it's not that big of a deal. It was helpful because... It's just when you talk about it and normalize it. I think it's so hard, too, because herpes has been a punchline in movies for so long. Right. Like, I recently watched John Tucker Must Die. And... There's a scene when they're like trying to get back at him and they make him a herpes model and he's in the theater and he gets booed out of the theater, like popcorn thrown at him. (laughs) I was like, for having herpes? Right. Yeah, it's a punchline. But also we grew up where being fat was a punchline too. Like the stuff we just talked about. Like it's like we've evolved also from that. I think people still make herpes jokes and then like people still make them. And I'm like, (laughs) your turn is coming, baby. Like it's like everyone has it. They don't even test your blood anymore because it causes so much mental health. So it's like if you don't have an outbreak, you might still have it. Well, and that was the one thing I really remember from our episode that I didn't know was that this is not on a pap smear or on a panel. You have to get blood work yeah so you have to request it and so a lot of people could be I assume living with it dormant and you would never even get tested unless you had an outbreak and you requested it right yeah I I mean no no, no, that's true it's so funny my friend she was seeing this guy and she was like I'm so sick of using condoms I was like you better make him check I was like he needs to go in and check and he got his blood tested (laughs) and he tested positive and I was like but it's only like, he's never had an outbreak yeah well i mean do you know the stats on how many people have herpes is it like one in three one in four they say one in three they say one in three okay. but i do believe it's one in three like i mean i think it includes i think it's one in six for like herpes downstairs but like all herpes like a cold mouth, sore a cold sore okay but like i'm saying it's probably more there's people who I could have it. You could have yeah. it. Like you just, if you've never had an outbreak, it could be in your body. I mean, yeah. again, we're not doctors. You guys, you know, if, if you thought we were, we're not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had an outbreak, so uh, it was pretty clear. For just sure. that first time. The first time. Yeah. And then and not since you're on Valtrex. It's a daily pill. Okay. Yeah, it's a daily pill. Just because I don't want to have to think about it. For sure. I love what you said to him so much. And I hope it gave people a lot of like comfort and relief that like he called this girl sketchy. And you were like, now I have herpes too. And what what is my sin here? That I trusted and someone? so do you. Yeah. Like that I believed you when you said that like I could trust you, that you're STI free. Like I'm not sketchy. I'm a normal fucking person. Yeah. And I like, I went to his birthday party with all of his friends and I'm like, I just felt so stupid. I was like, this is ridiculous. And I was so sad. Like I, yeah, I didn't know what to do. What was going through your mind at that time? Yeah. I felt like I'll never date again. Mm-hmm. And like, I would go on a couple dates and then I'd be so weird and guys would like be like, oh, do you want to go on a second date? And then I'd be like, no, I was so afraid to have to tell them. Yeah. And then when I started doing it in stand up, it just kind of helped me tell someone because it's like if you say it in a room full of people, <laughs> it takes the power away it from takes, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. also, one time I told a guy and he was like, I have it too. <laughs> he was like, well, Why are you telling me this? And I was like, Well, I don't. And then I talked to my doctor. Was he not going to tell you? Yeah, he wasn't going to tell me. Because I would talk to my doctor and she was like, if you don't have an outbreak and you're using condoms, you don't have to tell them. If they ask, you shouldn't lie, but you don't have to tell them. Mm -hmm. 
and I have such weird guilt, so I feel like halfway through sex, I'm like, I have herpes if I didn't just lead with it. Uh-huh. So, but no, guys don't care. Okay. Never once have they cared. Okay. When do you normally bring it up? <laughs> when I meet them immediately. I'm like, hi. No. Well, um, if you've seen your Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like on my clips. Instagram. I tell them like when it's it feels like we're going to have sex. Yeah. Okay. Like whatever date that is. And I'm like, look, you should know. And they're like, okay. I, I mean, that may not be everyone's experience, but I really love hearing that. It's really encouraging that you have run into plenty of guys that have not cared yeah i also live in new york city for a while yeah. i did for yeah. a while i got this text message i was really surprised by it a very close guy friend of mine texted me and he said that somebody who he had been recently dating told him that she had herpes and he was like she said this this and this to me and he basically wanted my advice on how to respond because he was like i want to be kind and i want to ask the right questions because i don't want to like make her feel bad but he was like i don't know what to say here he wasn't like this is so gross he was like i i want to know how common this is and what her outbreaks are like and is she on medication and i was like then just say that you know like if you like somebody and you want to continue to date them yeah it's totally normal for somebody to share some information with you and if you really don't know anything about it to ask questions and i just I was like proud that it's become normalized to the point that like people at least are just like the the initial reaction isn't I don't want to be with this person. The initial totally. reaction from him was like I want to know how to ask the questions, and I was at least you know happy to see that that's becoming more common. Yeah, yeah. I told a couple of my comic guy friends before I I was like, what do you think of this? And they were like, I think it's a good test. They're like, you date the worst fucking guys. So <laughs> <laughs> honestly, this is a good you know gauge of like how men are going to treat you after sex like if they do respond like horribly then they were you know what i mean i I love that anywhere anyway yeah it's a great filtering system yeah so i still sometimes it's like the weight thing i still sometimes feel weird about it because i can't help it because people make jokes and even Mm -hmm. even now people will make like oh herpes you know and it's like i'll be sitting right there i'm like i'm right fucking here but i shake it off you Mm -hmm. know because i also Guys dump girls for the dumbest shit. Like, Mm -hmm. my friend's brother dumped this girl. He said she's never had an original thought. (laughs) I'm like, that's a new one. (laughs) Wow. How original original. are his thoughts? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm like, if a guy doesn't like you, he's going to find a way to dump you. And then, like, if it's herpes, like... See you later, virgin, you know, (laughs) fucking loser. I mean, it's just so common. And, okay, so you are just closing it, but you've run into people that are like, I don't, I think you should, but you know, obviously if you're using condoms, but I mean, you met a guy who was like, I wasn't going to tell you basically. Yeah. Okay. But then like we hung out a few more times and I was like, this is a type of guy who wouldn't tell someone. Okay. (laughs) Also, I'm not saying this in a judgmental way, but out of curiosity of like how most people are handling this, you know, not that you know how everybody's handling it but yeah I think when you get it like I've had a lot of girls message me after a show and be like oh my god my I was at that show I was with my friends they don't know but I do have it I never know what to say because I'm like I'm sorry that happened Mm -hmm. you know they have a lot of questions and I'm like you're just gonna get over it over time Mm -hmm. also herpes the longer it's in your system the less strong like strong it is okay so basically after it could not stop showing up after 10 years. Yeah. Which is a long time <laughs> to have herpes. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, also encouraging. Yeah. It, it does go away. Like, uh-huh. or is less strong. I don't know. Yeah. But well, happy you brought that up. I really was curious if people watch your clips and come to your shows and they slide into your DMs and ask you about it. I, it's girls mostly because I think girls feel more shame about it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I always feel so bad for them because I know exactly what they're going through. It's true. I think women are made to feel shame about everything, about every part of your body, how you smell, how you look, your weight. And so like, that's just like another thing that I have to like think about in my day to day life. But I find it really at least calming that you can take something from it and that you haven't had an outbreak, which is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Is that common? Or you do know if that's common? I'm none of us are claiming to be doctors. If you take the pill every day, it is common. To not have outbreaks. I mean, again, not an expert in any way, but even something like HIV is so much more treatable and it's just so different than it was Mm -hmm. when we were growing up we've come so far with medications Mm -hmm. yeah and I think it just sucks that herpes does last the longest and it's the most common like Mm -hmm. 
Right. I have so many friends who got chlamydia. Like when I got herpes, my friend was like, I just had chlamydia. I was like, you shut the fuck up. You're bragging <laughs> at this point. <laughs> right. Well, my we talked about it last week, but my mom called me and told me I had chlamydia, but she was just reading my like lab results wrong. But she was just so casual about it on the phone. I was like, I've had that. It's like no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My parents, when I was so depressed in my basement, because I like wouldn't, I was like, I'm not going to eat dinner with you guys. Like I'm just so sad alone in the basement and my parents came down and they're like we're worried you're on heroin i was like what <laughs> and i was like no i i have herpes and th- my parents both at the same time are like oh my god thank god oh my god <laughs> the lesson of this episode make them think it's on the worst yeah <laughs> right and they were like your grandmother had that i was like it's the same one that almost burned the house the, down <laughs> grandma again <laughs> yeah that's She's just- a crazy hoe uh, oh my god! Wild woman. Yeah, and you feel like it just has gotten easier, like telling people and caring so much about it, and thinking that's a death sentence day one to being more confident. Yeah, and also I was 28 when I got it. I'm about to be 31. I feel like you become more of an adult when you're 30, and mm-hmm. so now guys I'm dating are like mid 30s, so it's like they're adults. Mm-hmm. Like a guy in their 20s, like oh no, <laughs> it's so true. I mean, yeah. I really, I feel like I'm like giving too much credit to this guy who texted me that, but I, feel, I dated him in our 20s, and that's my view of him. And he's in his mid 30s now, and he's a man. He's an yeah. adult man who's like confident and smart. And I did not expect that to be his reaction. And it's like, of course it is. It's an adult. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And chances are, if someone breaks up with you for this, they were going to break up with you for something else. Yeah, exactly. Like, I appreciate what you said about being like a good gauge of someone who would be with you, stick around. When I think about all my guy friends that I know that you know, none of them have ever told me that they met a girl with herpes and didn't date her. Yeah. It was her personality. <laughs> yeah, every, something else. I really, I mean, I never thought about it that way, but it's a good way to reframe it. Like, I don't know one person that's ever been like, they had herpes, so we broke up. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> because like your guy friend, you would ask questions. And once you actually know the disease and are educated on it, it's not that big a deal. I once tweeted, people who say herpes isn't a big deal have herpes, <laughs> and which is, you know, my karma, I fucking got it. But like... Uh, oh, you tweeted that before? <laughs> yeah. But then I learned, like, because it is not a big deal, and it's made to be a big deal because it's the easiest punchline. Like, you couldn't make fun of HIV because people were dying from it. Mm-hmm. So, like, herpes was, like, the easiest one to make fun of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's fun to ask your partner to go get tested before you sleep with them. One of my best friends, Emily Fender, was on our show in March of 2022. She is psychotic, will not touch you naked until you go get an STD test. Yeah. And she's so, she just like won't do it. I'm always so impressed with her. She'll make you she'll march down to a place where you can get up inside of that. Can you do it pretty easy? With I mean, I've had this at my gyno, but it's like at like an annual. Can you just, is it easy? You can do it at urgent care. Yeah. You can? Yeah, you can get tested. You can get herpes tested at urgent care. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. anything done at urgent care. Well, <laughs> and then how quick do you get the results? Herpes is pretty urgent. Let me tell you, you cannot walk. <laughs> well, because they'll, they'll take your blood. Oh. You know, like I've done everything there. Like there's not specialists, you know? So like they diagnosed me with like hypertension and like extreme blood pressure issues. I mean, I know it's a blood pressure cuff, okay. but like. Well, I just like to talk about how easy it is. Yeah. I know because Emily. Because I so just crazed. think of it as like your gynecologist appointment, which who could take who knows right, how months. long. Yes. Yeah, so you can go to urgent care. Well, great. We went off the street. Should we go get, should we go get bestie <laughs> do herpes you people, tests? Do people run in there like someone's demanding <laughs> before they fuck? And they're like, I need it right now. Can you ex- I need a rapid. A lot of people, a lot of doctors <laughs> are like, no. <laughs> Try to fuck in an hour. <laughs> a rapid herpes test, like a COVID test. Yeah, I have guy friends who go in there and they lie and they're like, I just had sex with a girl who has herpes just to like check that they don't have it. And I'm like, you're so neurotic. Okay. Well, good to know. Yeah. So we're going to transition topics yeah. into something a little heavier. Yeah, I was. So when I was talking about the trauma earlier, it was because almost two years ago on my birthday, <laughs> I was abducted and raped. And uh, it was in L.A. and it was in front of the bungalow. And a lot of times I found out what men do is they'll pull up and their friend will pull up behind them in the same car so you get in their car and then they cancel the ride so they look for drunk girls to like do this like two camrys pull up that's what the car you thought you were gonna get in okay exactly and i got i was so drunk this was actually the night before my birthday and then i was out with a guy and he got in the car with me and he got out at 7-eleven and then i don't remember i really don't remember anything and i woke up in this guy's bed in compton and um he like tried to put a blanket on me, which was crazy. And immediately, like my body was in fight mode. And I was like, where did we meet? Because I recognized him from the Uber. 
and he was like in Santa Monica. Like he was like, holy shit, she caught me. Like, and he was so young. So he almost like heard that girls will be like, oh, okay. And I was like, you rape me, you rape me, you rape me. I started screaming. And he goes, you have to keep your voice down. There are kids in the house. I'm like, where the fuck are we? Oh my God. So I grab my shit and I run out of the house and I FaceTime my friend in Wisconsin because I just like didn't know what to do. And she like answers. She's like, oh my God, what happened? And I was like, I got raped. And then my phone fucking dies. And I'm in the middle of Compton. So then I, I'm like, okay, oh I went to USC. I feel like I know how to get around here. And so I ran to a main street and I, I just, I sprinted to a nearby gas station and I asked to charge my phone. The guy was like, no. I was like, do you have a phone charger? And he was like, No. And I, I was like, please, I like really need help. And he was just like, no. So then I go down to the motel that was like down the street and I try to check into a hotel so I can use the hotel phone. And the guy's like, no, we're booked. And I'm like, can I use the phone? And he said, no. So I'm like, holy shit. So then I get on the bus and I'm like, Char- Charlie's there in a monster at this point. Like my hair's everywhere. I'm just like shaking. And I'm like, I turned to a guy and I was like, are we going towards Santa Monica? And he goes, no. And he was like, but by the way, you are so beautiful. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And I like pull the stop. I get out. And I remember seeing like a Starbucks across the street when we were when we were driving the bus. So I run to a Starbucks and I call my dad because that's the only number I knew. And then he called my friend who picked me up and, uh. I didn't, I didn't want to go to the rape center because I was like, they're not going to do anything about this. I know it. And like, I'm just going to have to spend all day in the rape center. And my friend was like, you have to go. So I did. And it's pretty brutal. Like I had call, outgoing calls to 911. I had like, so I was like fully conscious, but like, I don't remember anything. Mm-hmm. And then I went to rehab because I was like, had to deal with this trauma. And they said, sometimes your brain blocks things out yeah. because it will make you go crazy. So I had so much evidence against this guy but basically they ended up dropping the case because they said that multiple women need to come forward so he needs to rape multiple women what and they they need to come forward so that they have a case because with one woman it's too much he said she said i'm like speechless i don't even know what yeah is that too dark for the- no <laughs> no i'm not it's never too dark i mean it's your experience but so what happened was that you called an Uber and a different, you got into a different person's car and he drove you to his home and you don't remember being there. And in no, terms he, he of- drove me, I think he drove me to a parking lot in Culver City to do it because I had called an Uber. I called another Uber when I was in, like, and I looked at my map and it was in a parking lot in Culver City and I had outgoing calls to 911. So oh, I was like, God, yeah, that's, I, I, fi- and then that means he dragged like my lifeless body into his home. And I'm so lucky he didn't kill me. Like, I, that, I think about that all, all yeah. the time. Like, he could have murdered me. But this kid was, like, 17. I was That's, like, like so crazy. I remember you telling me this. And, like, what I was picturing was, like, an older man. Like, I don't know why. You just think it's, like, you have a picture in your head of someone that would do this. And it was, like, a, this is, like, a young person. Yeah, I woke up to, like, posters on the wall. Like, you know, what like the fuck? Soccer players on the wall. And I'm, like, uh-oh. And then I look at him and I was, like, oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, it was just, I think it's, it's so unfortunate because it happens every single night. Like I wasn't in the cop car cause I didn't write down the address because I was just trying to run away from him. Cause I was kind of worried he'd get a gun and shoot me cause I just screamed rape. So I like ran out and I ran down the, the street and so fast. And then I realized I didn't write down his address. So I went with a cop the next day. My mom flew in, we went to the, got in a cop car and we drove to the house to like Cause I could remember the gas station and the turns mm-hmm. and I remembered the house. So I showed them the house and, uh, as we're d- pulling up, they get a call and they're like, a woman's been raped by her Uber driver. Um, but she doesn't want to report it because her mom will be mad at her for being drunk. And I was like sitting in there and in the car, like they were like, sorry if this is triggering. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and they were like, yeah, this happens every single night. It happens in Miami and Chicago mostly. And L.A. And it's, it's just hard to prove they're saying, allegedly, because they can't prove that you didn't know who this was, that you didn't volunteer to go home Well, they're them. just, is their point, like, this could have been a person that this was consensual with? Is their point, like, this could have been a hookup? That, that That's it's... what the cop argued. Okay. Which is so crazy, because, like, my body was so bruised. Like, oh I was, God. like, beaten the shit out of. So, like obviously what the fuck i just like i don't have any words like i'm so mad like 
that this is how this played out, that this happens all the time. And there's like nothing. That's what I think kills me is that I feel so helpless against it because I'm like, there's really nothing we can do. So the cop was like in the car. The detective was like, I just want to be honest with you. Like, you're probably not going to get anything out of this. And my mom goes, what? So I have to get a gun and shoot the guy? <laughs> I'm like, don't say but that. that is, that's mom. the feeling you're left But can you, like, this wasn't your Uber driver that you could see his photo in the app. This was a, like, Somebody his else. friend, probably. Is yeah. that what the, I think I'm they just were like, working I together. I would, like, they, blast this person's photo all over the internet. Yeah. Like, I that think, would be my recourse. But I understand being afraid that that person, like, could get a gun and, and kill, kill you. you. I know. It's, you there's, know? A, it's terrifying. And I just want to jump in here and tell people, like, you can go back and listen to our episode with Brittany Piper, which was in 2020, of, like... To report, not to report. This is like, we're not telling anyone what they should do or shouldn't do. And neither are you. And neither was she. So, you know. I think too, I had kind of a crazy like year after. And a part of it was like the guy who got into the car with me, who got out. First of all, when I called him from the rape center, he goes, oh, you're alive. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? And he's like, that guy was so creepy. I was like, and you left me in the fucking car. What? Oh my God. What? And like that guy didn't reach out all year. And I was like. I'm losing my fucking mind. Yeah. I was like, did this not happen? Like, am I making this up? Uh So I feel like having the evidence, having the police report was helpful for myself because I was Mm -hmm. like, people deal with the trauma differently and I understand it's really hard for people and like, it's not an easy thing. So yeah, I just was kind of losing my mind. I'm just, I'm sorry. And I I know the feeling of helplessness you must feel because you're invalidated at every point. Yeah. And they were like, if you go to court, they're going to... Look through your Instagram and see that you talk about sex on the stage. Oh, my God. See that you're drunk all the time or drink alcohol and they're going to make you out to be the worst person in the world. And I was like, honestly, I still wanted to press charges because I was like, I this this happened. This happened. And like the fact that it's being treated like it's not happening or it didn't happen blows my fucking mind. Yeah. And. Like, actually, the cop ghosted me. So I would like text him and I'd be like, is there any update? And he wouldn't text me back. And then I had to hire pro bono, my friend's dad, who's a lawyer, to get the actual verdict of like what, why this cop ghosted me. So he couldn't even fucking sack up and tell me that they were dropping the case. I had to go through like, how does this real life? Like, I don't have like the words to articulate how I even feel about this. It's just... Like, how the actual fuck is yeah. this how this plays out? Uh-huh. And it sounds like, you know, you are a person that has the resources. You have a family that supports you in this. You went down every one of the right paths. Right. You immediately went to the rape center. You got a rape kit. You brought the cop back there. You knew who this person was and, like, still could not prosecute him. It makes me so angry. Yeah. So that was kind of, like, the anger I was dealing with all year, which I think going to rehab really helped me process Mm -hmm. it obviously but then like the losing weight and the Adderall I think it was a direct relation to like losing my mind from this Mm -hmm. uh, event and unlike herpes rape is such a hard thing to talk about (laughs) like because people get so uncomfortable and a lot of times like I've talked about this before on a different podcast and the comments were like she's making this up this is the fakest story I've ever heard and it does sound like a crazy story but like it's so insane that it's like why would I make that up well, like I'm I'm sure, well, I don't even crazy like, to me I don't it's, even want to validate yeah, people yeah, that insane. say that That's, so yeah it's it's a weird thing to talk about because obviously men don't cannot handle the word rape they're like whoa uh, uh, you know they because they feel like somehow they're responsible. I don't know. It's just a very awkward thing to happen. Mm. And when I got out of rehab, I, I had lost a lot of weight. And I remember my friend goes, I, who didn't know, she was like, oh, my God, you look so good. What have you been doing? I was like, if you only fucking knew. Oh, not. my God. Yeah. So with her, yeah, with herpes, I think it has been easier to process as a comedian on stage. And like it's been helpful to talk about. But I feel like with rape, even talking about it, people make you a bad person somehow or like they you know villainize you for like talking about it or they I don't know which is so ass backwards do you have people to talk about it with like yeah I mean I found like support yeah I'm in like a lot of therapy and like Uh I did ketamine therapy I really I've just been trying everything and I think the only thing I can do is like have acceptance and like that's so unfortunate but I've had to get sober you know, like change my life and just try to move forward because there's Mm -hmm. nothing I can do. And I don't want this to hold me back for the rest of my life. 
So that was the thing. When I got out of rehab, I was like, I just want to get back on stage. I just want to do stand up. But it wasn't like as easy as I thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I just want to get back to doing everything. So I ignored it. And uh -huh. then taking all that Adderall, like you feel nothing on Adderall. And so it was very like, oh, I'm just never going to leave my apartment. I got a dog. I never left my apartment. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. And I just like went crazy in my apartment. Mm -hmm. So when I had a second breakdown in Miami after I was like on all this Adderall and I talked to my friend, She's like, I would say this breakdown is better than the last one. <laughs> like, we're, on a <laughs> we, boat we're making Miami. progress. Yeah. 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 It's just tough because, you know, I want to make jokes, but it's like, it's not, it's <laughs> the hardest part about getting raped is being a comedian. Cause I'm like, I can't even talk about it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we talked about this before of like part of the, the joy of being a comedian is processing your darkest shit on stage. But then there's this line of like, People get uncomfortable. I was talking about this with someone else about some really dark topic and they were like, people get too tight. And then you're like, this isn't serving the purpose that I wanted to. This is not going to be relatable to a lot of the <laughs> listeners, but I feel you. No. And also I don't want people feeling bad for me. Like I hate the feeling okay, of like yeah. pity. So I'm like, I, it's, it's okay. Like I survived. And the fact that I wasn't murdered is such a gift. Mm -hmm. And like, I now believe everything happens for a reason. I believe in the universe. I'm very spiritual, which is, you know, people would be like, she lost her mind. But like, I kind of have to think that way. Yeah. I have to think everything happens for a reason. That got me sober. Like, I really need to get sober. Uh huh. And I don't remember it, which is also a lucky thing. Like, if I had remembered it, it would be Re impossible. Replay, replay. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm impressed with you for your perseverance. And, you know, all you can do is go to therapy and talk about this and try to move on. And if anybody invalidates it or suggests you made it up, no one wants this. No one wants to be the person that has to talk about this and deal with this every single day. What a crazy thing to insinuate that somebody would make this up. And yes, of course, once in a blue moon, there are people that make anything up. But it's such a disgusting, horrible thing to insinuate that it didn't happen or that your version of events is not true. And you didn't get anything out of it either you didn't get to prosecute somebody like it's not a vindictiveness thing where you went after a person exactly and I don't really talk about it on social media I don't really talk about it unless it's in a podcast setting because if people are listening and are uncomfortable they can turn it off you know and it's it's just easier to be in a safe space to talk about because it is such a dark thing yeah. and then like you're able to share the whole story and yeah like exactly. not have like a snippets people could take and run with I don't know but obviously it goes without saying like let this just be like a, a cautionary tale and also to anyone listening like yeah I would say definitely just, always check the license yeah plate. yeah and that what's crazy is I got in the car with a guy right you know right yeah that's like it's you not think even you like I was with a friend it's like yeah right, check the, the license plate but it's hard when you're fucking up that's of course. This, this happened to another girl I know because my friend connected us in West Hollywood one of those clubs this happened to her and it's like ha it happens all the time and I've had nights when I've been out and I've gotten an Uber and guys have been like, oh, you need a ride? And I'm like, thank God I'm not fucking drunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they're they like, they prey on drunk women. Yeah. And there's not, it's not like I, this conversation is so touchy because like you should be able to get fucking drunk and not get raped, you know? But it's like when you don't have your wits about you, like I feel so lucky that I went to college in this town where I was blackout drunk all the time and nothing bad ever happened, you know, and I got out of there because it was just like, I didn't know where I was a, a lot, you know, which is you're an easy target if you're stumbling around dead behind the eyes. So it's just like, I never want to be like, don't get drunk. You know, it's just like, that's not fair. We don't, we shouldn't live right. like that. People should just not kidnap and rape people and abduct them. But it's like, figure out your plan so there's someone that's less drunk or like whatever it is, whatever we have to do to be out here just like screaming, check the license plate. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like there's whatever we need to do. To, so it's like top of mind. If like this is one thing that can even when you're you've been drinking, you can remember. Totally. And another thing I do when I before I get in a car, I'm like, who are you here for? Instead of being like, is uh, yes. Hannah? Yes. So I ask them. That you ask them. Yeah. But I also check the license plate. And I last year it had been a year since it happened and I was in LA for a wedding and I got in an Uber and I didn't check the license plate 
and the guy was like very weird and creepy i was so scared like i i had ptsd so he rolled to a stop sign i opened the door and rolled out get of the out. car just get out get like out i mean yep. don't hurt yourself and like just but i'm like you trust your gut and if you're wrong you're wrong and you no. look like a crazy person but what's Who the cares? alternative awkwardly i checked the license because he stopped because he was like what the fuck i checked the license plate it was the correct <laughs> license plate so i had to awkwardly get back in the car oh you got back in. <laughs> yeah i got back in because i was like well i need the ride well that's not weird either to me like i I think you demand that somebody says your name to you yeah. and then you check the license plate. Yeah. And the guy was like, is everything okay? I was like, I just have PTSD. And then like, he didn't say anything. And then three minutes later he goes, my ex-girlfriend had PTSD. <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder fucking why. Like, <laughs> yeah. But it was just such a moment of like, could this happen again? Like totally. I mean, it could, but I, that's why I don't drink. I like always want to be able to fight someone or be sure I'm getting in the right car. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. Hannah, you're really like, just thank you so much for sharing that story. It's just like, it's so personal and it's so important. And I think that this happens obviously a lot more than, you know, we even know about. So it makes me so mad, but I'm like, so so I'm so like proud of you and impressed that you're just like, all I can do is work on me now and like be an advocate and speak out about this. And so thank you. We just, we need people like you to do stuff like that. Thanks. I mean, I hope that, yeah, it helps someone. And my friend said... It, it, it is, it will. <laughs> yeah, she told people, like, she told her friends about it. Mm-hmm. And then she texted me, like, oh, my friend ended up not getting into the wrong car because she checked the license plate. And I was like, the fact that it has already helped one person yeah. mm-hmm. is enough. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the only silver lining from this. And so thank you. And everything you've shared in this episode is, like, really vulnerable and honest and open. And then maybe it's a big deal to you because you do this on stage all the time. And it's a big deal to a lot of people. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. And then me. people can follow you on Instagram, watch your comedy. Yeah. Plug everything you want. This is such a weird time to plug something. But <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> really, <laughs> guys, follow me for more exciting stories. Well, Hannah, if you want to slide in and ask you questions about your life and your experience, yeah. where can they slide in? It's at Hans Dickey, H A N S D I C K I E. And I am performing in Seattle June 1st. And okay. That's on my Instagram. Great. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, again, weird time to plug, but <laughs> girlsgottoeat.com for tour dates, tickets, all the things. Girls Gotta Eat podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I'm Ash Hess. Raina is Raina Greenberg. And then vibesonly.com and vibes only on Instagram for our sex toy company and connected app. And that's it. We'll see you next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.